today on Issue at Hand, the bridge between Guardians of the Galaxy, Thor Ragnarok, and even Justice League. We're going to talk about the cosmic in comics. This is Issue at Hand, Polygon's show about the strange world of comics. I'm your host, Susanna Polo, and one of my favorite things about superhero universes is the potential they have to include every genre of adventure fiction. Generally, we think of superhero universes as being full of people who have extraordinary powers and use them to fight evil in a major city in a strange costume. But when you dig into the accumulated creative output of decades, with new characters being added all the time and old characters bubbling back into the surface as new artists take a nostalgic shine to them, you start to dig into a near infinite pool of creative takes on that concept. Urban fantasy? You got it. Self-referential comedy? It's there. Spy stories? Yep. High fantasy in a medieval setting? Let me see if I, uh... yes, absolutely. Canonical characters who are just literally gods? Yeah, that too. Now, sure. To a certain extent, this is because the Marvel and DC universe is formed by accretion. From the talents of many artists and writers over decades of time. But that accretion is a self-fulfilling cycle. Which came first, the setting that any kind of character can fit into, or the creators who realized that their setting was one that any kind of character can fit into? This is all a roundabout way of saying, as somebody whose favorite superhero is a guy with no powers who only works in one city. Thank you, I'm blushing super hard under the mask. I've always been fascinated by the sub-sub-genre of the cosmic in superhero comics. And even if you don't read comics, the cosmic has started to become a common thread in mainstream superhero adaptations. When I say cosmic, I'm broadly talking about comics that take place in space. In the Marvel and DC universes, once superheroes get off of Earth and out into space, anything goes. You might get swept up in an intergalactic conflict. Maybe you'll earn the ire of an ancient god. Maybe you'll just become another face in an endless stream of motley aliens trying to get by in a lawless society. Is Batman a cosmic character? No. Is Superman? Sometimes. Is Green Lantern? Hell yes. The rules that bind the cosmic in comics set it apart from a lot of modern space stories. Let me explain what I mean by that, and then I'll explain why that is. For the most part, when we make epic space stories today, their underpinnings are about setting up new conceptual rules, about using an internally consistent set of parameters to explore philosophical concepts, ethical questions, or character conflict. Think Star Trek, The Martian, or The Expanse. There are, of course, some big exceptions here. Franchises that are less interested in the rules of their settings. It's more like a big ball of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. As they are in just telling a story about the never-ending battle between good and evil. Star Wars and Doctor Who are fundamentally more romantic than a lot of other fiction set in space, just like the cosmic in comics. No, I meant in the literary sense, as in characterized by its emphasis on emotion and the idea that art comes directly from the imagination and shouldn't be bound by artificial rules. Sorry. One of the reasons why Star Wars, Doctor Who, and superhero comics share this niche is that they're all stories that grew out of or are a deliberate homage to pulp science fiction and the adventure series of the 1930s and 40s. They're much more like Flash Gordon or John Carter of Mars than they are like the work of Clark Asimov or Heinlein. And that's because by the time so-called hard science fiction saw its rise in popularity in the 1960s and 70s, cosmic comics and Doctor Who were fully formed settings, and the Star Wars universe was deliberately created as a throwback. Before the comics code in the 1950s, the American comic industry flourished with crazy space adventures of all kinds, including adaptations of the early work of Ray Bradbury. Because before modern animation techniques and special effects, comics were where you could make visual science fiction stories that actually looked good. And a lot of the biggest concepts in Marvel's cosmic setting, and some pretty prominent ones in DC's, owe their existence and their design to Jack Kirby. Jack Kirby's writing and his design sensibility influenced so much of superhero comics, and he really deserves a whole episode dedicated to him. But here's a brief list of Kirby cosmic characters that have already been featured in a big screen adaptation, or will be within the year. Galactus and the Silver Surfer. The Kree. Groot. The Celestials, who were name dropped in the first Guardians of the Galaxy, and Ego the Living Planet, who is being played by Kurt Russell in the second Guardians of the Galaxy. And 
over on the other side of things, the new gods of DC Comics. That means, as we explored last episode, Darkseid, Steppenwolf, and the Parademons. You're probably starting to notice a certain design sensibility here. If you've ever wondered why everybody in space comics has really intense hats and heavily contrasting face paint, why everyone makes this same weird energy effect, or why everything is covered in these incredibly dense geometric patterns full of gears and circles and bars, that's all the influence of Jack the King Kirby. I think the reason why I'm so fascinated by the cosmic in superhero comics is because it's a microcosm of what I already love about the superhero setting, which is its tendency to use every genre. And the cosmic also does that out of accretion, because writers and artists created cosmic settings from whole cloth for their particular corner of the fictional universe. Characters invented for the Fantastic Four to interact with, for the X-Men, for Green Lantern, the Teen Titans. Characters invented because DC Comics invited Jack Kirby to make whoever the heck he wanted, and eventually, one of them became Superman's most powerful villain. Like the rest of superhero comics, the ideas came first, and we figured out the rules later. Science is indistinguishable from magic, religion is indistinguishable from mere supernatural power, and stories can be very, very big or very, very small. So we wind up with a patchwork of the fantastic, a strange and thriving galaxy full of secrets and legends, empires and frontiers, laced through with the stories of the heroes who try to do good in it. Next week, on Issue at Hand, Thor Ragnarok. For real this time. There's just too much not to talk about it. For the most part, when we make epic space stories today, their underpinnings of our uh, bleh, bleh, pulp science fiction and the advent bleh. because before modern animation techniques, techniques, no, in the literary sense, as in, oh dear. <laughs> <laughs>